Now, hello everyone, my name is Steve Poon. So in our previous lectures, we extensively covered the fundamental concept of registers within the context of assembly language. So these registers serve as a high speed temporary storage units that play a pivotal role in holding values and addresses required during the execution of instructions. So as a natural progression, let's delve deeper into the memory hierarchy of a computer system, exploring not only registers, but also the crucial elements of memory and stacks. Memory, a slightly slower storage component compared to registers. This serves as a more enduring repository for storing data that is needed over extended periods. So it provides a vast expense where the processor can securely retain values for more extended periods, ensuring data persistence beyond the instantaneous demands of instruction execution. So this distinction between registers and memory highlights the intricate interplay between storage speed and durability that the modern computing system leverage to optimize performance. So in addition to registers and memory, let's introduce the concept of stack. This is a, this is a dynamic and pivotal data structure. So, so the stack emerged emerged as the contiguous array of location strategically utilized to manage program flow and data manipulation efficiently and effectively. So it operates on a last in first out LIFO principle, meaning that the most recently added item is the first to be removed. So this unique attribute enables the stack to efficiently manage function costs, local variables and control flow during program execution. So in summary, our exploration into the heart of assembly language has so far encompassed the indispensable role of registers, the enduring nature of memory, and the dynamic functionality of stacks. So as we progress, uh, a comprehensive understanding of these foundational elements will empower you to craft efficient and optimized assembly language programs, uh, uh, capitalizing uh, on the intricate dance between the speed, persistence, and dynamic data management. So in this lecture, uh, so far, we explored the theory side of stack segment. This is a crucial aspect of memory management in assembly program. And the stack starts in high memory and grows downward, similar to the growth of an icicle. So the push instruction adds item to the stack, expanding it while the pop instruction removes items causing it to sh sh shrink. So monitoring the stack uh, pointer, which is the RSP, confirms this behavior. The stack acts as a temporary storage, preserving registers values and facilitating data transfers to functions. So we will delve into the functions further in upcoming uh, lectures. And now we will, let's uh, open the SASM and write our example assembly application create a new project save it somewhere in this case i will save it on the sources which i sh i'm sharing the sources in every lecture here so it should be somewhere yeah new here stack stack yeah now save this file as whatever you like for example in this case i will stack test here dot asm that's it. And here we will start uh, with this uh, declare the external function printf. So extern printf here. And after that, we will create a section data. In this case, we will actually define the four data here. In this case, the first is going to be uh, strng uh, db here, abcde and all so this is the input string let's actually write it like the the input string a b c d e here and we will also str string or actually let's change this variable names right string here or my string my string and after that my string len here we will use eq here and minus my string minus one. Now with this here we are 
telling the assembler to calculate the length of the string without the null terminator. So our null terminator is here, just to keep in mind. And after that, we will first create the FMT. This is for the format string for printing original string. So in this case, FMT1 here, FMT1 DB. So this is the, we will print it out like the original string is or yeah or the original string actually let's make it uppercase the original string and we will pass this s here because of the string here and yeah that's it 10 and 0 as i said this is form a string for printing original string here let me actually check is my voice recording yes perfect now after that we will also create the fmt2 this is for the reverse string so db as well so the the reverse string as again a uh, lowercase s here 10 zero now we will create the section text here and we will declare the entry point of the program as main global main here and now we will develop our main label so in this case we will first um, uh, for load format strings load, we, are, we will first load the format string for original string and we will, after that we will load address of the input string so uh, move here again move rdi fmt1 and move rsi uh, my string my string and move racks zero after that we will call the printf which we will uh, develop that now let's actually add more tabs here to make it a bit nicer and here we have the printf label. we need to create the printf function or label to print the original string here and after that we will also uh, now let's create a new chunk of code here so in this case we will put with this codes here we will push the string character by character onto the stack so in this case we will first clear this uh, rag we will cl clear the racks here with xor so racks racks and after that we will load the address of the input string into rbx rbx uh, and my string and after that we will we will load the length of the string into rcx counter so move um, rcx and my string len and after that uh, we will initialize r12 as a pointer so move r12 0 and here we are initializing the r12 as a pointer and now we will create the uh, push loop here let's actually make it a little bit down yeah now we will create a, a push loop here let's actually label push loop here and we will first move the al so we will load the character into al here uh, in order to do that we will after that we will enter the byte not like this byte rbx rbx plus r12 that we used here and after that we will push the character onto the stack here with just simply push rbx and now we will increment the character pointer r12 and now we will loop uh, push loop again uh, so we are with this here we are telling the assembler to continue looping for the entire string here and after that we will um yeah after that let's actually write it down so after that we will need to pop the string character by character from the string uh, in this case reversing it so move move rbx my string it with this here we are loading the address of the input string into rbx 
and also we need to write this line of code out of the patch loop here so uh, like this and in order to do that we will just add tabs to this patch loop here and that's it and now what we're going to do is we will just continue writing this so um, move rbx my string so we with this we are loading the address of the input string into rbx and after that we will rcx uh, my string length my string length uh yeah my my string length here and also we need to add two spaces between this my that that's it and now now yeah, my string length um after that now we will just initialize the r12 as a pointer so move r12 as zero and now we will do this pop loop again but in this case um we will firstly pop a character from stack here you will pop loop here in this case it was a push loop now we will develop this pop loop here so we will firstly push the <laughs> we will firstly pop the character from the stack so in order to do that pop racks and after that we will move move the byte here and rbx plus r12 and al al and now we will increment the character pointer r12 and we will loop uh, we will telling the assembler to continue looping for the entire string so loop pop loop here and after that uh, we will need to terminate the reverse string with null uh, and in order to do that actually we didn't need to write it out of the um yeah no no we we actually need to write it inside this this uh termination with null inside this pop loop here so move byte rbx plus r12 and zero now that's good now after that we will just enter the new, new line let's actually make it here perfect now we will go to new line here and here we will print the reverse string so move um yes yeah. here we have the byte with this we are terminating the reverse string with null and now we just well, what left to do is print the reversed string here with we will first use the move of course to load the former string for reverse string so move rdi uh, fmt2 and we move rsi my string with this we are loading the address of the reverse string but here we are with, with this here we loaded the former string for reverse string and now we will move the ranks uh, zero with this we are clearing the ranks and after that we will just call the printf with this we are calling the printf function to print the reversed string and after that we will just we will move the rsp rsp with this we are restoring the stack pointer and pop rbp we are restoring with this we are restoring the base pointer and after that we will return from the main function now let's run this and as you can see we got a little error here so section empire executable here and in function start on the find reference to main let's see that so as you can see here we have the global uh, yeah in the text section actually 
we need to, to just add one. No? Yeah. Let's actually... The thing is we didn't actually write it, wrote this main function. Yeah. That's it. This is how it works here. But here, instead of the reverse tr string, we got the h h h. Let's actually debug that and see why this happened. So here we are red. Pop rbx move here. rbx pop loop. Let's actually start from the here. If I'm my string racks. Calling printf. And after that, XOR racks racks my string RCX, RCX string length R12 0. And here we have the push loop. So we are first moving the character into racks. RBX plus R12. Yes. Racks R12. And we will loop the push loop again. And here we have the RBX my string, RCX string length, and R12 0. And here we have the on pop loop here racks. Um, yes, this is true. R12, loop, pop loop, and with this we are terminating string with 0. Yes. And in the printing reverse string, we have this here. Move RDI, FMT2, move RSI, my string, move racks 0, and calling printf, RSP, RBP. No, here, yes. RSP, RBP, maybe. Yeah, this is the... This doesn't... Program crashed. So move RSP, RBP here. Pop RBP and red. The program is crashed here. Wondering why. Yeah, I think we actually added excessive tabs here so let's delete these tabs and this should fix the problem and after that after executing this code i will explain this code line by line that's it oh the program crashed again so GNU stack section implies executable stack is deprecated and will be removed in future version of linker. Hmm. Let's also let's delete this tab again. Hmm. Build successfully, but we got this again. <laughs> we found it. Again, why? We will fix that now, don't worry. Right now. And now I found a real solution to this problem. The thing is, we didn't actually save the base pointer here. So after main, we just need to add two lines of code push rbp and move rbp to rsp. That's it. Now, perfect, we, our program is executing and program finished normally, but we are still not seeing this reverse string here. And I think we have, the, we found the problem here. So instead of pushing the RBX, we will need to push the, these bytes to RA racks here. So, and that's it our program works the original string a b c d e the reverse string a b c <laughs> e, e, e d c b a so now i wanna uh, explain this code line by line so the code starts by printing 
the original uh, string using the printf and the former string fmt the code then passes each uh, character uh, of the original string onto the stack using a loop so this effect eff effectively reverses the order of the characters on the stack after reversing the characters on the stack the code pops each character from the stack and stores it in the reverse string uh, here and this process effectively reverses the original string and the reverse string is terminated with a new character and finally the reverse string is printed using the printf and the format string fmt2 so this code showcases a stack-based approach to reverse a string and highlights the usage of stack in assembly programmer and it demonstrates string manipulation, memory access, and function calls using the printf function. And the code structure allows you to see the entire process of pushing characters onto the stack, reversing the string, and then printing it, uh, the reverse string. So maintaining the stack effectively and efficiently demands meticulous tracking of parsed elements and their order. And as you can, as you saw here, we um, just have one register. We made a mistake here and our code didn't run here. So instead of reverse showing us reverse string, it showed us like bunch of H's here, which was not the ex expected result here. And we fixed it here. So it was just a simple typo here, but you can also um, face technical problems, memory problems, and so on, which um, in next lectures, you will also learn all of this. And now, uh, this practice proves especially critical when employing the stack to temporarily safeguard registers, and it is imperative to maintain reverse sequence when popping the registers. Failure to do so could lead to erroneous program behavior or even program crashes, as you saw in, pre uh, in previous example here. So now, uh, while registers are commonly pushed and popped, it's worth uh, keeping in mind that memory and immediate values can also be involved in these operations. So popping can target registers or memory locations, but it's important to acknowledge that uh, immediate values cannot be popped. Or this is a logical constraint. And an additional aspect to keep in mind is the manipulation of the flag register. Uh, so pushing the flag register onto the stack can be shipped using the push f instruction. And to store it, uh, this is, we can use the pop f instruction comes in the play. So this uh, capability proves the advantages when uh, preserving and restoring the program's executing, uh, execution st state. So by adhering to these principles and understanding the nuances of stack management, you pave the way for robust and reliable assembly programming practices. But before that, let's actually, um, I wanna run this program in terminal. So cd uh, sources assembly and stack here, ls. And as you can see, actually we did have the make file here. So we don't have the, Right, from zero. So uh, cd on the phone sources assembly. And we did have this, mm, let's say, jump make file. And we will just, yeah, no, we don't have that actually. cd exabytes. Yeah, and as you can see, we have this make file here. Let's copy this make file. Copy this. Copy um, exabytes make file to stack. Yes. And see the stack mouse pad. Mm, the make file. And as you can see, we have this make file here. Now we will just change this name. So in this case, stack stack dot o here stack here well instead of writing this we can also use this functionality of this um, mouse pad so we will just go to search and find and replace we will write the exa bytes and mm, stack stack test replace that's it perfect now we will go back to here clear make make and as you can see here, we compiled our program, assembled, and linked it. 
Now, as you can see, we have the stack test here. And as you can see, whenever we launch it, you will see this original string and reverse string. So that's it with our lecture. In next lecture, we will also analyze and debug this program. And I'm meeting you in next lecture.